Hello and welcome to the Sounds from the Grave podcast. My name is Yusuf. And my name is Vanya. And it's our first time, so just bear with us. So there's a, well, there's not a whole lot. I, I, I would like to say there's a whole lot going on. I almost said that out of habit, but there's not a whole <laughs> lot going on. But it still is, can be just as exciting as HHN news. So it is, um, so bear with us. Um, Quite literally. Um, <laughs> so we are going to be talking about some of the stuff that is happening in the haunt community. And yeah, so, um, well, would you like to tell us a little bit more of what's going on? Uh, yeah, yeah. So we, we're kind of, this is kind of like a two part episode. Like one half is going to be one thing and then the other half is going to be about another thing. Uh, the first half is going to be about what's going on with uh, Howl Scream and like some of the HHN stuff regarding Hollywood. Which, because we're, we're all dying inside right now because we didn't get an announcement this last Thursday. We were all hoping for something and we got nothing. Yeah. And I I almost cried. <laughs> Not gonna lie. There was a lot of high hopes that yeah. day. And I mean, that, but to be fair, um, they did give us a little bit of a sneak peek of what it was supposed to be. Mm-hmm. But I think... Um, I don't know what's going on or how it works regarding the announcements in Universal yeah. having to do with, uh, you know, something not going right on their end. So if something yeah. doesn't go right on their end, then they can't announce something. So it, I heard it got delayed back um, kind of thing. But I think when we get to the Hollywood portion of that, we will talk about it more in yeah. depth. Uh, so Bush Gardens is has still has their open auditions. Uh, for both uh, Orlando and Tampa, so um, it, that's still confirmed because I did go to MetroCon and they were passing out the flyers for both Orlando and Tampa. So if you guys are in the Orlando or Tampa area and you want to do something a uh, spooky or haunt seasony, they're still taking people for their lovely uh, group of scare actors. Uh, they said that they need more fresh meat, so that's definitely something that's out out there for Bush Gardens. But now we're talking about Bush Gardens Tampa, which is uh, the OG, at least for Florida. Uh, and they release uh, Cell Block Zombies. Uh, so that was the another house uh, that they announced for Tampa. And it's a Welcome to Purgatory Penitentiary. Penitentiary? Yes. Um, <laughs> where afterlife sentences are served with a vengeance. Incarceration is just the beginning as maniacal guards shuffle fresh meat down the... <laughs> dark and lawless paths for processing surviving the prison yard leads to maximum security and confinement that is anything but solitary there are two options for the inmates here break out alive or be devoured in detention so yeah so this, what this did you cool. think about the trailer yeah yeah the, the, like the the concept behind this sounds really interesting that's literally like jail with you and zombies so i'm like yeah that, that could be pretty cool very Walking Dead like because if you, if you yeah. know there was a whole like set of seasons set in a prison but um, the whole concept of like you're being processed as a prisoner and not only do you have to avoid the other prisoners there with you you also have to avoid zombies that are just happen to be there for some reason so yes. I like the concept of that um, yeah I could I could see that being pretty cool uh, so uh, I don't know if you're planning on going to the Tampa one uh, this year, Yusef, but I don't know if this is going to be a repeat because uh, not a repeat. Maybe they're replacing this particular uh, area. So there's this area in Tampa. I don't know the name of the house, but they have it every year in Tampa uh, for Bush Gardens, which is a zombie uh, like almost like a warehouse full of zombies and it's like a laser tag kind mm-hmm. of thing. I remember so it's kind of like yeah. a zombie outbreak. Um, but you know, the other obviously behind of uh, kind of like uh, fences, like barbed wire mm-hmm. kind of thing. You kind of have to shoot them kind of thing. Uh, so I don't know if this is going to be something that's still laser tag ish or if it's just going to be a regular house uh, with, mm-hmm. of course, you no know, uh, laser tag guns and it's just going to be just a cell block zombies and just you so 
Um, I'm a little bit worried if there's going to be two repeating concepts of zombies. But other than that, I, it does sound awesome. The trailer looks like some kind of Alcatraz looking oh, yeah. doll like kind of feel to it. So I'm also very excited to see this new concept uh, come to life. Mm -hmm. It's funny because now I'm just like thinking about zombies getting arrested. And like being taken to court and like just being like, you know, like be judge being like, how do you plead? And they're like, brain. <laughs> how do you plead? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just, I don't know. It's, it's like, sir, do not use that type of language with me. You will be held in contempt of court. <laughs> I speak zombie. <laughs> All right. We're being dumb now at this point. But yeah, that is uh, the announcement for uh, Bush Garden Stampa uh, for their Hollow Scream, and now we're going next to uh, Sea World Hollow Scream. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Which is going to be their first year, and of course, before we go into the Sea World one, this is now three new houses that have been announced for Tampa, and I'm super excited for them because normally they don't repeat. Uh, they they don't do that many houses, maybe one or two, but never three. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be very cool for Tampa, especially for their marketing. Oh yeah. Uh, but yeah, I we'll also did hear today that it was the, also the last day for the deals. For the $30 yes, that is deal. correct. A thirty dollar deal ticket uh, today, which is we're recording this on a Sunday, so today would be the last day for that. Yeah. Um. So. so. Hope you guys got it. Yeah, and if you didn't, that's okay. the The prices for the tickets are still pretty affordable. They're not going to cost you an arm and a leg, especially because a lot of people are getting the, the like season pass for it. I guess like where you just yeah, get to go pretty much every day. Yeah, yeah, which isn't too bad. I heard it's not, like the prices aren't too bad on that. So I'm def I'm definitely thinking about getting that for the Sea World version because um, I want to experience some yeah. more of that. Um, but when so, it comes to SeaWorld, though, we got some new announcements. So we have two houses and one scare zone announced for SeaWorld. So our right. first one is going to be one of the houses. It is called Beneath the Ice. And this looks really cool. Uh, I'm going to read the synopsis real quick. It's uh, in the icy wilderness above the Arctic Circle. A research facility was lost, buried under the snow and cut off from the outside world. Something compel you to join the rescue party, but doubt is creeping in. Was that laughter or the wind? That shiver you feel isn't just from the cold. These, these chambers aren't just frozen tombs. They're pulsing with unspeakable horrors, and you'll have to stay frosty and alert to survive at all costs. I feel like because they're, they have so much ice-themed uh, buildings, I feel like they're just going to use that to their advantage, oh, yeah. which I honestly... Think like they have the whole really like cool penguin house. yeah like the whole penguin enclosure area yeah i wonder if they're gonna use that facility oh you just smell can, penguin can we just time. can we just have like can we just have like zombie penguins ew no <laughs> obviously not Bro. like real penguins but like little like puppet zombie penguins with that would be really funny <laughs> oh creative team please don't hire him um, <laughs> I'm kidding. Wow, but it's just uh, uh, that's fine. No, he he's he's a great <laughs> guy. Um, but like, um, yeah, it's. I'm wondering if they're gonna use a lot of the uh, penguin encounter, but y y I am a little worried that um, the if they do use the big the penguin encounter building, how much is gonna take away from like there is a really strong smell mm -hmm. in that area. The so there, smell, I'm yeah. a little bit worried about that, and also like. If they're gonna make it chilly, kind of like Yeti was tolerable. Yeah, it wasn't like freezing was cold. Freezing. Oh yeah, Poltergeist was freezing. So I think if they can find like a mix between those two, where it's like a little colder than Yeti, but not as cold as Poltergeist, I think that'll be a good mix. Because you obviously yeah. want to feel like that immersiveness of being like in the cold, you know, in the Arctic Circle. But at the same time, you don't want your guests to to feel like they're freezing and just kind of blaze through the house so they can get out of the cold. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but this does give me a little bit of uh, the thing vibe. Oh yeah, so I'm kind of the whole, with it, so. yeah, the whole like Arctic research post, that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's very much the thing. Yeah. So not only that, I feel like we should continue on. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think Frozen Terror is the other one, which is a scare zone or a mm -hmm. house. It's a scare zone. Okay, so 
within the icy theme, I think we should talk about uh, Frozen Terror, which is a scare zone. And and I'm going to read the synopsis. Uh, you might think that you're safe from a snow entombed research facility, but you're not free from the frozen horrors. This inhospitable Arctic wasteland is swarming with icy subhuman walkers. They might ha have picks, pick axes and shovels, and they're not here to help dig for survivors. They're here to turn you into one of them. So I feel like this is going to be a continuation of Beneath the Ice. Yes, I, I'm thinking this is going to be like the whole area leading up to the entrance to the house, because you're, you know, they're going to make it immersive where you're like, oh, you have to walk across this frozen tundra to get to the research facility. Yeah, I and honestly it, think yeah. that's a really good thing to do. Oh, yeah, um, it's pretty smart. And very unique. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I've ever seen Bush Gardens do something of the sort, because mm -hmm. Bush Gardens, or sorry, I shouldn't say Bush Gardens, Hollow Scream, uh, mm -hmm. they tend to just throw different themes around and put scare actors everywhere. Like, they don't have a scare zone. It's just... Toss them everywhere in the park, call it a day. Um, but the fact that they're doing this could potentially uh, change the game and like the haunt facility, like basically just the environment. Mm -hmm. Because to have a scare zone leading up to a house is a really smart idea. And I think more haunts should do that. Yeah, like I remember Horror Nights did something similar to it. Obviously, not as it looks like this is going to be a little bit more involved. But Horror yeah. Nights, every once in a while, they would have, like, a miniature scare zone outside some entrances to the houses with yeah. characters that would show up in the house. Like, I remember they used to, for the first version of Dead Exposure, they would have a couple of zombies out in front of the entrance to that, kind of walking around, messing with people. Uh, and then they did the same thing with Body Collectors, where they had a couple of the uh, collectors kind of walking around that area. Some of them were on Heelys, funny enough. I don't know why. So that, that was, cool. like, the funniest thing. They would come up to you in Heelys. Um, uh, so yeah, so like it's some it's Horror Nights is something very close to that, but not as what seems immersive. to be a lot more immersive and more tied to the story of the house. Yeah, so that's, I that's pretty cool. I like that. Feel yeah. like something that they should consider doing, um, especially for. I feel like it would have been like if you were to put the Rob Zombie scare zone in front of House of a Thousand Corpses. I feel like that would have made sense mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. And I would it, agree with like, that. Yeah, and anything with uh, I know that <laughs> the one time they did it, they did it wrong. Um, just the year, the one year I don't remember which year. Please don't quote me on this. Or they had zombies everywhere, and uh, the Walking Dead was there, and I was like, "There's no chainsaws. There's no nothing." What? And not only like that, that, it sucked because sometimes they would all focus on like one side of the park, and then you'd be walking, and there'd be nothing going on. So yeah. you're just like walking through empty sets, and I'm just like, where are all the zombies? Give me some zombies, something. Give me, give me something. Yeah, that, so. I think that was one of the weakest years for HHN. But um, a little since we kind of str like strided away from that, I think for sure that this is gonna definitely change up some stuff mm -hmm. in the haunt community, especially. I feel like more haunts should do more scare zones, more immersive. Uh, like front yard stuff uh leading up to i know that petrified kind of does something similar to that mm -hmm. but i don't think there's just a whole lot i feel like if they had a lot more scare actors even outside versus inside and i feel like everything like you never lose that immersion yeah from the theme so good on you i applaud you sea world hollow screen good job for your first year <laughs> hopefully it's good too yeah it's so. shaping up like they're gonna it looks like a, a kind of a nice place for them to to think of new ideas you know like hey it's a brand new event we're doing for the first time in this park it's a good chance for us to experiment a little bit see what works what doesn't work and if we you know if it's viable to bring this back and yeah, I think that's a pretty good idea on their part of like, hey, why don't we try extending the story of the house to the street? Yeah. So that'd be interesting. I, I'm I'm an, I'm excited to see that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So we are gonna be talking about the second house that was announced. I think this was a little bit earlier. Yes. Um, which is Dead Vines. Uh, so it seems like it's a very Bayou esque. Uh, type of feel to it uh tell us a little bit more about it uh yes so funny enough like reading the synopsis on this uh, i'm gonna read it out real quick it says something is stirring among the trees 
A shiver runs down your spine as you creep forward one timid step at a time. Is this jungle alive or undead? There's an ominous force at work here, a merciless mistress of ivy and evil. She's poisoned these woods with an all-consuming appetite for visitors like you. Keep moving and find a way out before it's too late. You don't want to end up dead on the vine. I like that description. It it's mm. like, um, it's like dead waters meets uh, a seat of seats of extinction, where like the forest is alive, but then there's some kind of like voodoo magic behind it, and I'm like, okay, yeah, okay, I see you over there, Sea World. I, I see you experimenting. Yeah, I I, I like this. Definitely enjoy that. I always liked the lores behind like uh, Louisiana, New Orleans. Uh, type of lore with uh when it comes to voodoo and bayou and mm -hmm. all those other folk tales that they have so i think that's definitely something that they could work on especially since they have a lot of like muggy stuff in sea world but not in a bad way yeah. like it's definitely something that they could work with uh they're working with their environment which is something that i am in admiring right now about mm -hmm. uh, sea world yeah uh, they're, they're definitely you know saying hey we're sea world we're water oriented as a theme park we're going to do something to do with water and swamps and mud and like that kind of stuff. So like, you know, we're, yeah. we're keeping it in theme with what the park is representing. So I'm like, you know what? That's, that's a good idea. I like the fact that they're doing that kind of stuff. Yeah. So with, um, do we know how many houses, uh, there are going to be uh, trying I, to, I, I do not for... remember. I think on the, on the website, I can, I think you can see the, the, how many slots are left that still say coming soon. I just don't remember off the top of my head because I, I saw it once haven't checked it again yeah. since. So I don't, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head, but I think it might be like maybe three or f total of like four or five houses, including these two. I'm not sure yet. Couldn't tell you for I sure. I wouldn't know either. I think for me, I'm, a pretty good guess would be because uh, SeaWorld isn't really that big a park. Yeah, but they have a lot of room to play with scare zones. True, uh, true. They have a lot of room um, to play with scare zones. It's not a huge park, but it has the potential, especially if Fiends comes to SeaWorld, which I heard it was. Uh, Fiends literally is going to take up everybody wants. If you are a hardcore Bush Gardens Hollow Scream fan, I mean, I'm not saying that I am because I've been to Hollow Scream a handful of times. I can't remember at the top of my head when I started going. But if you go to Hollow Scream, you have to watch Fiends. Like, that is like the show. They change it up every year. The characters are likable. We all love. Uh, Dr. Frankenstein and Igor and their shebangs and the hot pink nurses uh, and their adventures each and every year. Everything is good. Like, that's going to take up a lot of their money and they're mm -hmm. smart to bring it to both parts. That is pretty smart, sure. yeah. Because, uh, you know, for so, some people like myself that don't feel like driving all the way to Tampa for that kind of stuff, it, it's a lot closer for me to, to be able to make it over there, you know. Yeah, I wonder if they're gonna do the feast, uh, the feast special in Sea World too, where you can have the all you can eat buffet uh, for sixty dollars. I believe it oh, was Jesus 60 Christ. Or 50 <laughs> but it gives you also free uh, an hour entrance to all the houses. Oh no, I'm not. That's not a bad thing. I'm like sixty bucks for all you can eat and scare and like and haunted houses. Like sign me up. Yeah, you have like an hour to to go like... to, to all the houses. That's what they did at Hollow Scream, uh, obviously two years ago, because they, they had the scare zones last year, which I yeah. went to. I also have a video of that on my HHN cultist with me going through the scare zones. Hi, little promo right there. <laughs> but yeah, like they, they give you like the feast and then you have an hour to go through all the houses and it's like the fast lane, like basically mm. the express pass for them. The, fa the queue, I don't know what it's called. I'm sorry, SeaWorld. <laughs> This is, this is called their version of Fast Pass or Express or whatever. Yeah. Whatever, whatever they call it. Whatever we call it. Yeah. Call it the Dolphin Line. The Dolphin Line. <laughs> um, but yeah, like that sounds like a really cool thing. I had no idea that was like a whole experience of, of a all-you-can-eat buffet. And oh, it used to be our like, access to the house. Like, I'm over here like I'm down like because a bitch can eat. Yeah. It used to be the feast, the show, and an hour wow. like all in one it, it was, was it was like deal. you got to watch the show 
the buffet and the 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 one hour to Ooh. go through all the houses in Tampa. So I don't know, if, but they removed fiends from that experience uh, because it was such a popular show. Everybody wanted to watch it. So gotcha. Yeah. So it's like a little. Wanted limiting. to extend it to the outside crowd. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. But um, but yeah, that's really all we have regarding the how the scream side of stuff. So yeah. you know, we we might not have gotten some HHN announcements there. For Orlando, at least, but we did get some Hollow Scream related news, so that's cool. That's something to keep us over a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but now we're moving on to Horror Nights, but not talking Horror Nights Orlando. We're talking Horror Nights Hollywood. I think before we do go to Hollywood, I think uh, the biggest clues that we did get were from uh, Horror Night Nightmares. Yes. And their, little, their tickets, which we are assuming were the frequent fear passes, were finally going to drop. And uh, icons, emojis, literally representing the icons. Yep. So we were assuming that we were finally going to get the icons house announcement, plus the frequent fear passes. But, yeah, that's uh, what I heard too. Confirmed. Yeah, and one yeah. of the tweets that I saw, I think it was also from Horror Nights Nightmares, they said the reason for the delay was something to do with the Universal websites being down. Um, but they did say that they were supposed to be announcing the multi-night tickets. Yeah, but I also heard that they were also going to... I hope this is not true. Um, because I, I know all of us are going to be this week looking at the, the Twitter and the website like crazy. Uh, I did hear that the frequent fear passes were going to be delayed two weeks. Mm. And that's pushing really close to the event. Yeah. Uh, re- regarding the the horror night nightmares, they did uh, say that later on in a tweet when we were really disappointed of not getting anything by three o'clock. Yeah. Um. But other than that, I know that there are some people who are hardcore Halloween horror night Hollywood fans as well. So let's get into that. So. Yeah. Uh, so for Horror Nights Hollywood, the big news there was that we got two house announcements, and they also actually got the announcements for the multi-night tickets. So they they now have the frequent fear stuff going on right now. Oh, lucky bitches! I know. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. I love you guys. Love you, love you, Hollywood. <laughs> um, but out of the two announcements, so the first one that we got was the Exorcist coming back to Hollywood. Because um, they had it the same year that we had it in Orlando, they had it for the uh, Horror Nights 2016 over there, and they're bringing it back because it was kind of a fan favorite over there. Um, yeah. So uh, on the synopsis here, it says the film that fueled your worst nightmares has returned to Halloween Horror Nights. Enter the most haunting scenes from the film as 12-year-old Reagan is possessed by a demon, possibly the devil himself. It's a battle of the wills between good and evil. So there's really not a lot going on there. I mean, we know the story of the Exorcist. Um, we already had that house. I didn't get to really see that house because I wasn't at 26, but um, we already kind of know the whole overall plot and gist of what they're going to be doing. Honestly, I, if I could go back in time, I would experience uh, Exorcist all over again. It's because I was too scared, mind you. <laughs> and the fact that you got to see uh, the demon pop out in a couple of places in the original uh, Exorcist house in Orlando was pretty cool. I was just too terrified. I think I only experienced it once because the line was outrageously long. Oh, yeah. The first Same thing that happened for you, things. Was, Yeah, this was before I even decided to get the frequent fear. So I only got to experience it once, and I wish I could experience it again. Um, but, you know, hope is not lost, because uh, if they can bring American Werewolf in London three times, I feel like this has the potential to come back, maybe potentially for Orlando. I just don't think this year. Yeah. But, um, yeah, like I said, there's really not a lot to say there for the Hollywood version of that. Um, next announcement that we got, though, I'm going to let you take that one. Okay. Uh, so the second house that they announced, I'm I'm gonna guess it's an original. It is an original, and it's something that we've had that they've had before. They're just bringing it back, and it's gonna be an exact carbon copy of what they had before, though. Hollywood, what are you doing? <laughs> um. Anyway, <laughs> but I'm guessing it was a it was a fan favorite. I'm gonna assume it was a fan favorite. Well, that and it's also back. because they're dealing with a lot of budget issues too, because the pandemic shut Hollywood down for a lot longer than it did Orlando. 
Okay. So that really affected their budget, so they don't have a lot of money to work with. So they had to redo a lot of stuff. That's fair. Yeah. Um. So yeah, the house is the Curse of Pandora's Box. Uh, I honestly think this is a really cool concept because mm -hmm. um, we all kind of know a little bit of the story, but the synopsis is an ancient horror has returned on to prey on those foolish enough to attempt fates with their curiosity and greed enters Pandora's curiosity shop where her infamous box lies. Once it's open, all matter of evil will be unleashed. Greek mythology is about to become your monstrous reality. So, yeah, as we all know, um, Pandora's box, all evil things, chaos, all of the things that you can yep. imagine is going to come back uh, for Halloween Horror Nights, uh, Hollywood, um, you know, I still think it is really cool that Hollywood can repeat houses um, because Orlando kind of has the tendency to try not to, but Walking Dead, anyway. Um, <laughs> anyway. But either way, um, I still think that's still an amazing experience and the fact that you guys kind of get to relive some stuff is awesome. And I also heard that Bride of Frankenstein is way different over there yes um, in a, in a Q and a they they said that it's gonna feature more it's gonna be more of like the origin story of the bride so like how she became that smart like smart enough to to become a scientist and bring the creature back so it's a nice little tie-in so they're like okay we saw the story of orlando of like she's bringing him back but now we're gonna go hollywood's like okay we're gonna do like a prequel to that of like how she got the idea to do this, like her evolution into the character that we see in Orlando. Yeah. So like, you know what's interesting? Crazy? That's I cool. was having a conversation with my boyfriend. He's like, why do you like Bright so much? <laughs> and then I had to tell him from why I like her so much. I'm like, it's just not aesthetic. But I said, I spoiled the house for him a little bit because he is going to come down for October. I said, how does she get that smart to talk? Like, to talk, where does she get it? <laughs> like, I'm just like, um, so I know that we see her trying to lift it off the monster. Then all of a sudden she's in a lab coat. I'm like, where did she find the assistant? Yeah. How did she become that smart? Like, where, how did she even get Dra the Dracula's brides to even like, or like how she kidnapped them kind of thing? Like, I was like, that's something I want to know. Mm -hmm. I mean, our story is cool and all, but that's something I always wanted to know. Yeah, you want to know that's the lore. Yeah, like, they never opened last year, did they? They never did an HHN light either? No, they didn't. It was, uh, Hollywood was closed down completely during all that. Oh, man. But, yeah. yo, like, Beetle Jess is going to go to HHN Hollywood this year. Ooh, she gets, nice. She's going to get to experience it this year. So, uh, Beetle Jess, have fun. Please tell me all about it. And I hope someone records a walkthrough of it. Of the Hollywood Oh, they probably will because like, they, they, they do walkthroughs for Hollywood all the time because they're not as strict with the camera stuff as, as Orlando is. I wonder why. Uh, I, mean, I don't know. They just, I guess they're just more, more like less strict about it. They don't really care, I guess. That's fair. Yeah. But damn. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted that. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, like going going back to Pandora's box. I think that's an interesting concept too. I I really like Greek mythology. I would have liked to see live action versions of like uh, Greek creatures, like a Cyclops and and Minotaurs and that kind of stuff. I think that would be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh... Um, I wish I I like we had a. I well, I guess we can technically go on on YouTube and mm -hmm. watch it. Yeah. Because I, I'm very. I'm very tempted. That does seem awesome. I'm, I mm -hmm. don't think, other than Nightingale's uh, Blood Brew, which is very, it's Roman. Yeah, it's more, more, Roman, more right? of a yeah. Roman thing. Yeah, and then the only other I thing think... we had was like Tomb of the Ancients, but that was more like Egyptian. Oh yeah, yo! I only experienced that once, and that shit looks scary. It was like Indiana Jones on crack. <laughs> that like make it scary. Indiana like, Jones you on know, meth. <laughs> on meth, <laughs> for sure. Jesus. Oh God. <laughs> it's montana jones montana jones yes <laughs> yes sir. but yeah that was all of the horror news uh we kind of wanted to extend it a little bit talk your ear off about it um yeah. so you guys know that are not from orlando that um I, we're excited for you guys and of course uh hollow scream is going to be also epic especially 
with uh, having a lot of haunts coming back this year, mm-hmm. not only just Hollow Scream and HHN. We're having uh, Sir Henry's. We're having Scream and Stream. So many Scream and Stream. Uh, I heard is doing like a frequent fear pass now. Yep. Um, of course, at Petrified Forest, uh, announcements will be coming up soon again. Uh, auditions will be in two weeks, like two two weeks from now. Um, so yeah, there's there's a lot going on in October. So get ready, guys. We're gonna be <laughs> tired as fuck. And uh, just prep those wallets. You got some time. Just just prepare your wallets because this this might get expensive too. Oh, for sure. <laughs> it's gonna hurt. It's yeah. gonna fucking hurt. Oh yeah, it's gonna sting a little bit. Mm-hmm. But now we also got another thing that yes. you guys have to okay. hear about. So because I don't have the document for this, so this is technically Yusuf's. Uh, you're, yeah, you're you're going into doing this doing completely it. blind because you have no idea what any of this is about. I'm just gonna give yeah, like, you know you know the basic oh, gist no, of it. No. You know the basic. <laughs> <laughs> you all right? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like a chicken for a second. You're like. <laughs> <laughs> um anyway without that weird interruption there <laughs> um let me give you some background on this so for those of you that don't know back in i think it was 28 is when we got trick or treat as a house right so that's 27 or 28 28 28 yeah 27 was a scare zone so okay so for halloween horror nights 28 in orlando they did a trick or treat scare zone and I hadn't seen Trick or Treat in a hot minute. I'm like, man, I'm going to get back into Trick or Treat, like really study up on it so like I can see all those details in the house. Uh, to the point where it turned into an obsession with Trick or Treat for quite a while. Where I had literally seen that movie at least twice a week for about a month. Um, and it got to the point where I, I made my own version of a sequel in, in the form of a fan fiction. <laughs> and after much digging i did find it I, I found that old paper that's like three or four years old now and i decided why not let's let's read this and just and see how good it could be as a sequel if it's even possible that it could be a sequel so i i do have the paper here with me because it is on paper i wrote this on a, ta- on a typewriter because i'm a hipster piece of shit <laughs> um but yeah this is this is like trick or treat 2 i guess in my mind this is like my head cannon of trick or treat 2 anyway um let me you know let me let me lower my voice a little bit this is now an audiobook hold on <laughs> uh so let let me yeah uh, let me you know let me lower my voice this is now an an audiobook this is the uh the, stop that Stop that. If you're watching this on video, if you're not watching this, you're missing Vanya making suggestive licks to the microphone right now in, in a really creepy way. Rhonda X, uh, Sam fanfic. No, I'm kidding. Oh my god, stop. <laughs> it's a, no. They're the same age. They're the same age. They're the same age. Okay, okay. They're the same age. I didn't say... No, my, you should have heard what Karina said the other day. Oh god. She said... Uh, Sam X Lori. I'm like, first of all, Sam is 10. Stop. <laughs> first no. of all, Sam is 10. Mm-mm. Stop. Don't do that. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's but anyway, let us let us time. begin our read through of Trick or Treat Part Two, The Trick or Treat Strikes Back. <laughs> I'm sorry, I needed to add that in there. Okay. Um. <clears throat> yes. Stop. <laughs> all right. Um. <clears throat> A late afternoon breeze rolled through the open window and into the classroom the children staring at the clock on the wall with expectant faces. The teacher stared at her students with a blank expression. She pushed the brim of her, ch- of her witch's hat upwards. Children, she, no- she motioned to her students, the time is almost upon us for the witching hour, and we have to be ready for what lays ahead. She pointed towards the lit jack-o'-lantern resting on the windowsill. We must remember the rules of Sawin if we wish to have fortune tonight. Now, what is the first rule? In unison, the class responded, always hand out candy to trick-or-treaters. The teacher nodded. The second rule, always wear a costume, replied the students. The third rule, never blow out a jack-o'-lantern before midnight, the students yelled, ready for class to end. The teacher stared straight ahead, lost in thoughts and memories of a time long gone. The fourth rule, the class shifted, always respect the dead. 
the teacher gave a slight smile. And the fifth rule? The students yell at the top of their lungs, always check your candy. The teacher sat down and stared at her students. I urge each and every one of you to please follow these rules. The small girl raised her hand and asked, What happens if you break one of these rules, Miss Rhonda? Oh, 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 your face lit up. So this is like a time jump movie. So so Rhonda is now an adult. She is a, a, a teacher for, for the town. Uh, and okay, let me continue. <laughs> uh, Rhonda pushed up her glasses and stared directly at the little girl. Otherwise, he will come for you, Tina. Tina blinked in confusion. Who do you mean? Rhonda pointed to a painting she had made many years ago. Sam, of course. Rhonda stood up and sighed. Christmas has Santa, Valentine's Day has Cupid, she stared directly at Tina, and Halloween has Sam. He makes sure you follow the rules of Halloween. Tina stared at the picture. It featured a person the size of a child, clad in bright orange and with a sack for a head and buttons for eyes. Tina noticed the child was clutching a half-eaten lollipop. The bell rang and the students stampeded out of the classroom. Now we move on to our second section because uh, each section has a name attached to it so this first section was called Rhonda. the second section is called lisa the sunset blazed in the autumn sky a kaleidoscope of purples pinks and yellows cascading through the clouds the silver sedan whizzed by its driver lost in thought lisa just couldn't believe matt after the divorce it was like he had changed into a completely different person when they were still married he had been such a loving and doting father and now he barely acknowledged he even had children at least Tina would spend Halloween with her and not Matt. Lisa pulled into her driveway and looked towards her neighbor's house. The home had seen better days, but on Halloween that helped it look more imposing and run down. All around the house, jack o lanterns were strewn about, waiting to be lit for the evening. On the front porch sat Rhonda, bent low over a pumpkin, hard at work carving it. Lisa stepped out of her car and yelled, Hi, Miss... I'm sorry, this is a little bit worn out, uh... Oh, there it is. Hi, Miss Jefferson. It, was Tina good today? Rhonda jumped and stared. Uh, yes, she was fine, she murmured. Lisa smiled. She's really excited for tonight. Halloween is her favorite type of year. Time of year, she paused, waiting for a reaction from Rhonda, but there wasn't one. Her smile faltering, Lisa said, We always make sure to follow the rules she told me about when I was a little girl. Rhonda turned and stared uh, into the distance. Let me turn the page, I'm sorry. <laughs> Reminiscent about that fateful night so many years ago. As long as you follow the rules, he won't bother you, she said. Lisa cocked her head. You mean Sam? I'm sure he's just an urban legend, Miss Jefferson. Rhonda turned and stared directly at Lisa, a gleam in her eye. He is real. I've seen him. Every year, he comes to visit me and I give him a candy bar. Lisa backed away slowly. Then I'm sure you'll see him again tonight. She jiggled her keys. Anyway, I have to go and get Tina ready for tonight. Happy Halloween, Miss Jefferson. That is, uh, and moving on to our third section, it is called Tina. Arg! exclaimed Tina. She admired her pirate costume in the mirror. She inspected the eye patch and made sure her stubble was properly applied. Satisfied with the end result, she nodded, smiled, and turned off the bathroom light. She barreled down the stairs and toppled against her brother Brody. <laughs> I'll let you know why I call him that in just a second. Brody scowled, watch it, pipsqueak. Tina stared at him from top to bottom. What's your costume, Brody? She asked. Brody just scoffed and said, I'm too old for a costume. No, you're not. You're just being a jerk, replied Tina. Brody bent down, inches from Tina's face. What's it to you, though? He smiled as he pushed Tina's pirate hat onto her face and stood up. Lisa stepped out of the kitchen, her apron covered in pumpkin guts. Brody, you better be nice to your sister, she warned. Brody rolled his eyes. Whatever, he said. Lisa sighed. Just find a costume so you can take her trick-or-treating. Brody turned to Lisa and said, No, I'm not a kid. You can't tell me what to do. She can go on her own. Lisa stomped her foot. While you are living under my roof, you follow my rules. Is that understood? By the way, if, if you can hear the pages turning, that is some lovely ASMR for you. There you go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Brody bounded towards his mother. He grabbed the pumpkin from her hands and smashed it on the ground. It's probably why Dad left, he said. He pushed past her, grabbed his car keys, and stormed out the front door. Lisa went back to the kitchen and put down the scooper she was holding. She rubbed her temples, fighting back tears. Tina approached her mother. Mom, are you okay? She asked. Lisa turned to her daughter and smiled. Yeah, I'm okay, honey. Let's clean this mess up and we'll go trick-or-treating, okay? 
Tina hugged her mother. Okay, mommy. Now, before I get to the next part, let me explain why I called him Brody. Um, I had a, I had a friend, and we used to have a term for a certain type of toxic male. We used to call them Brodies. Specifically, we would spell that as bro die. <laughs> so oh, wow. that was our version of saying, like, for the bro guys, just being like, just die, dude. Like, shut up. Oh my god. <laughs> so that's, that's what we that's what we call them, Brodies. But anyway, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> this next section is called Brody. Brody pushed down the accelerator, the car speedometer reaching 70. The cool night air whipped by the open window. He repeatedly struck the steering wheel and screamed in white hot fury. After his anger subdued, he slicked back his hair and put on a devilish smile. A few moments later, he arrived at his girlfriend Julie's ho house. Ever the gentleman, Brody honked the horn until Julie opened the front door and stepped out. She slithered into the passenger seat and planted a wet, heavy kiss on his lips. Hi, baby, she said. We're going to pick up Timmy. They Try not to scratch the leather, okay? Said Brody. Together, they sped off towards Tim, uh, Timmy's home. Timmy was already outside nursing a few beers when they arrived. He hopped into the back seat and gave Brody and Julie a beer. Happy Halloween, fuckers, he slurred. Brody cracked open the beer and chucked it down. It's Halloween, I'm pissed, so let's fuck some shit up. They sped off, Tim hollering like a wild animal. They proceeded to egg houses, destroy mailboxes with Brody's baseball bat, and shout obscenities at trick-or-treaters. After some time, they started... Oh, after some time, the fun started to fade and the group was debating going home. Suddenly, Brody slammed on his brakes. Well, look who it is, he said, pointing at a lone gangly figure clutching a jack-o'-lantern. Julie cackled, it's Fairy Jerry. Tim clapped and said, this night just got a whole lot more fun. More, a more ASMR. Oh my god. <laughs> Brody drove up next to the solitary f figure and rolled down the window. Hey, Jerry, he yelled. Where are you heading? Jerry stopped dead in his tracks, eyes wide open in terror. He did not speak. Hey, fairy, I asked you a question, said Brody. Where are you heading? Finally, Jerry stuttered. I'm heading to the old quarry to leave a pumpkin for the kids who died there and honor Sam. Sam? The little freak with the bag over his head? Screamed Tim from the back seat. You actually believe that bullshit? Brody shushed him and turned back to Jerry. Hey, Jerry, we can give you a ride if you want, he said with a, with an evil smile. Jerry gulped. No, I'm okay, thank you, he said. Brody pretended to be shocked. You deny my hospitality? I insist. Jerry looked around him, nervous as to what might happen next. I'm okay, really, he said. Brody and Tim stepped out of the car. You're not being very nice, Jerry, said Brody. Where's your Halloween spirit? They stepped towards Jerry, and he took tiny steps back. Tim bolted behind him and held him down. You're not going anywhere, fairy, said Tim, his breath, re his breath reeking of alcohol. Brody laughed and punched Jerry in the stomach, knocking the wind out of him. Jerry crumpled on the sidewalk like a used paper bag. Brody and Tim held him by his arms and ho hoisted him like a puppet on a string. Julie cheered the... You, I'm sorry. Julie cheered them on as they forced Jerry into the trunk of the car. They then drove toward the quarry. The trunk was open ten minutes later, and Jerry was forcefully pulled and thrown onto the ground. He and Julie... Oh, I'm sorry, what did I write here? Oh, there it is. Okay, sorry, it's, a letter was faded out. <laughs> he heard Julie's bird-like laugh and footsteps all around him. He was picked up again and heard Brody say, If he wants to honor the dead, he should join them. Jerry felt a large push behind him, and he fell for what seemed like ages until he suddenly hit the ground with a dull thud. Tim, Julie, and Brody laughed as darkness enveloped him, and he passed out. Moving on to the next one. We're going back to Tina. Aren't you a scary pirate? The old lady smiled as she dropped a handful of chocolates in Tina's, in Tina's pillowcase. Tina then bounded down the stairs of the front porch towards her mother. They held hands as they walked down the bustling streets, surrounded on all sides by custom children and adults. A tall, gangly man in glasses knocked into them. He was wearing a white, blood-stained dress shirt and was carrying a knife. He looked on edge and stared at Tina after they walked past him. For a moment, Tina felt as if she was being watched. She looked at her surroundings, but could not place a feeling. Suddenly, she looked across the street and saw a figure standing next to a tree. The figure was about her size, clad in orange, and had a sack over its head. Tina stared at the figure until she bumped into a teenage vampire who hissed at her. When she turned to look again, the figure had disappeared. Now going back to uh, Jerry. Jerry opened his eyes slowly and groaned. He tasted blood in his mouth and every part of his body was on fire. He struggled to get up but only managed to get on his knees. 
He glanced upwards to the top of the cliff and estimated he had fallen about ten feet. Jerry sniffled. Why do they have to be so mean? He had never done anything to them. After some mental preparation, Jerry got up and surveyed the land around him. He noticed an old rusted elevator in the distance. He started, making, he started making his way towards it when he suddenly heard screams echoing from above. Brody? Oh my god, screamed Julie. What's happening? Jerry heard squelching sounds and pained, agonizing screaming. Suddenly, the cacophony stopped, just as abruptly, as abruptly as it had begun. Jerry scrambled towards the elevator and pulled on the rope. The elevator slowly rose to the top of the cliff. Jerry reached the top of the cliff and scanned the area until he found Brody's car, its lights blazing in the night. When he reached the car, he laid eyes on a scene he would never forget. Jerry dropped on all fours and vomited violently. He looked up again at the gruesome display before him. Splotches of blood stained the sandy ground. Brody lay headless on top of the car, his head a few feet away, frozen in surprise. Tim's eviscerated body was in front of the car, his intestines still falling out of his twitching but lifeless husk. Julie was on the hood like a deer on display, her arms missing and her legs bent behind her head at an, un at a at an unnatural angle. In front of their bodies, there stood a lone jack-o'-lantern still lit in all the carnage. <laughs> yeah, this shit got this shit got violent quick. Anyway, uh, Jerry saw movement. Sam has no remorse. Sam does not give a fuck. Uh, Jerry saw movement out of the corner of his eye. He turned to look in the distance, and he spotted a childlike creature clutching a lollipop. Now moving back to um. Tina. Uh, Lisa and Tina walked along the deserted, the deserted streets towards home. Tina, Tina proudly carried a pillowcase filled with candy and an assortment of treats. When they reached the front porch, there was a lit jack-o'-lantern in front of the door. Stay here, said Lisa. She slowly approached the pumpkin. There was a note attached to it. Lisa bent to pick it up and read it. Always have one lit. And now we move on to Rhonda. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I, I read that wrong. Always have one lit. And then it was signed by Rhonda. Lisa sighed in relief. Okay, come on, Tina. Miss Rhonda gave us a present. Let's bring it inside. Lisa noticed that Brody's car was still gone. She sighed again and shook her head. They headed inside and closed the door behind them. Lisa placed the jack-o'-lantern on the kitchen counter and went to the living room. Tina ran up to the counter to place a pillowcase, and in her excitement, knocked down the jack-o'-lantern. It fell with a dull thud and the candle inside went out. Immediately, the lights flickered for a moment, then went out completely. Tina yelped in surprise and began to cry. Lisa hurried over to her. It's okay, sweetie, it's probably the breaker, she said. You stay right here and I'll check it out, okay? Tina sniffed, uh, sniffled and nodded. Lisa blindly made her way to the basement. On the first step was a flashlight. She grabbed it and turned it on, then went down to the stairs to the circuit box. Just as she was about to open it, Tina let out a blood-curdling scream. Lisa sprinted back to the kitchen and found her against the wall in a fetal position. Baby, what's wrong? Lisa asked through, through wide eyes. Tina didn't say a word, but pointed instead to the living room. Lisa shone the flashlight at the uh, in the direction in which Tina pointed and shouted in surprise. In front of her was a figure dressed in orange with a sack over its head. The childlike figure held a candy bar in its hand, an extremely sharp blade protruding from the end. Lisa screamed and fell back against the wall next to Tina. What do you want? she demanded. The child did not answer and instead walked slowly towards them. Please, just leave us alone, yelled Lisa, tears streaming down her eyes. Tina looked at the figure as it crept closer and closer. Her eyes widened in realization. She stood up and ran to the kitchen counter. Tina, no, explained Lisa as she reached for her daughter, but she was too late. Tina reached the counter and took the pillowcase. She then stood in front of the creature. It stopped and cocked its head. Tina reached into the bag and pulled out a candy bar. She extended her hands towards the figure and gave it the candy bar. Here you go, Sam, she said. Happy Halloween. Sam stared at her before grabbing the candy bar, ripping it open, and eating it in one bite. Sam turned away from Tina and strolled out the front door. Lisa remained motionless in shock as Tina returned to her. It's okay, Mom, she said. It was just Sam. We should light the pumpkin again. Lisa swallowed and blinked. She stood up and, without saying a word, picked up the pumpkin and placed it on the counter, and took a match from the drawer next to her and lit the jack-o'-lantern as the lights flickered back on. Then we move on to Rhonda. Um, Tina was <laughs> Ding dong. Rhonda opened the door and stared at the trick-or-treaters waiting for the candy. 
She held a bowl and gave each of them two pieces of bite-sized candy. One by one, the trick-or-treaters thanked Rhonda, thanked Rhonda and left, all except one. Rhonda stopped and stared. I was hoping to see you, Sam, she said. Sam just cocked his head. She placed the bowl down and reached into her witch's robes and produced a king-sized candy bar. Happy Halloween, old friend, she said as she handed him the candy bar. Sam turned and walked into the darkness as the clock struck midnight and Halloween ended. Well, damn. <laughs> yeah. Well, damn. That, and that was my treatment for a, a trick-or-treat sequel. Pretty. That was, that was pretty solid. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I liked it. I was like, well, it, it, it reminded me a little bit of a, like a TV series, like just a little tiny episode that comes out after the movie, you know? Mm hmm. Or like it could be like a, or it could be like a goosebumps episode or something. Yeah. Yeah. So like it looks like a forty-minute, like segment in Mm -hmm. a film kind of thing. Basically, everybody obeyed except those fuckers that died. It's always the teenagers, you know. Yeah. But yeah, like funny enough, I actually really want to make a short film, like adapt it into a short film, especially because we already have somebody that can play Sam, and you know who I'm talking about. (laughs) <laughs> yes for Hi, those of you everybody. for those of you that don't know vanya has just like the most incredible sam cosplay that is like handmade and it's as, hot. it's like one of the closest things i have ever seen to a movie accurate sam costume oh, thank so you. like if we ever decide to make this i what i would love to do honestly is get a bunch of like our fellow podcasters together and like make that like a group project <laughs> yeah because i know i know there's a bunch of us that are that are also film students or are interested in that kind of stuff so i figured that like if i if that can happen at one point i would be just the happiest person alive just like the fact that we got a bunch of people together to to make our own little horror movie would be so nice yeah i agree it's gonna be so cool like if we ever do it you know Eh, sos please come (laughs) please help us please it would be so nice help us Yes, (laughs) Yes, <laughs> but yeah, that was that was my story that I wrote about three or four years ago, and and I hid away somewhere, thinking I would never see it again. <laughs> that was good. And, uh, and, and thinking of all things, was... and thinking of all things that it would never show up on a podcast. Yeah, well, <laughs> now it did because you know since Holly Horror Nights was already a disappointment, that was. That was a good replacement. Yeah. That was a good replacement for that. Thanks. And since we all needed a little dose of uh, Halloween, since it is, ah, oh, final summer is finally ending. Ah, love it. <laughs> I, I hate summer. I'm not, I'm not sorry and I'm not going to miss it. So yeah, don't at me. So, it's been, it's been too yeah. hot this summer too. It's been like ridiculously hot. Oh, for sure. Like it's this too much. You're awful. Yeah. But yeah, well, yeah that I feel was... like this was a little bit of a short episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but we figured because you know we were missing an announcement for Horror Nights, we we caught up on some other news and haunts communities, and we got to share something that we don't we normally don't really get a chance to do or or share. So I thought it was fun. Mm-hmm. I had a good time with that. Me too. Yeah, I, so... I, I I enjoyed listening in and, and <laughs> just sipping on my water. I'm just like, yes, tell me more. <laughs> you're like over here, like it's story time. I got my sippy cup and everything. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's a Starbucks sippy cup, to be fair. Not a actual <laughs> sippy cup. I know, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> but it is now time for our basic housekeeping. So, Vanya, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me at HHN Cultist on Twitter and on YouTube. I, I do anything that has to do with horror, haunts, Halloween Horror Nights more specifically, but I also do makeup as well, vlogs, you name it. So if that's something you're interested in, please uh, follow me or subscribe or what have you. Um, I am hoping that this week I, I it did hit me just today that I needed to record a YouTube video very soon. Uh, I am going to wait until Thursday, though, to see if we get anything so I can just slam everything into one video and yeah. um, and then edit and then get that out by Friday or Saturday. But other than that, of course, with the Hollow Scream talk, you guys can experience the 2020 version on my YouTube channel. That's yep, also yep. there. So you guys can compare and contrast uh, everything that will be happening this year. 
Uh, but yeah, that is that is my housekeeping. But I also know that my co-host also does things on his own. And yeah, he also does other amazing things. So, <laughs> Laura, can we find you, Yusuf? Uh, yes. So for my personal stuff, you can find me on Instagram at Yusuf twelve twenty and on Twitter at it be Yusuf. I mostly post a lot of random stuff on Twitter. Don't post on Instagram as much, but uh, Twitter is where I'm most active right now. Uh, but then for our podcast itself, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Sounds from the Grave. Uh, you can listen to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, anywhere else you can get podcasts, and as well as YouTube. And you can also send us an email. Our email is Sounds from the Grave Podcast at gmail.com. So you can tell us anything that's on your mind, and we might, whatever, depending on what it is, you, we might. Um, read it out on the show or however we'd like to do that just depends on what you send us and as well as you know if you want to be on the podcast do not hesitate to let us know so yeah that's pretty much all we have there yeah so basically anywhere in the world wherever you want to be just uh there we are <laughs> want to be on the in the podcast but other than that guys we reached 800 listens I know. we have been blowing up like crazy i don't know where y'all are getting this shit but thank you uh, for (laughs) listening and you know we're trying and and it's been it's been good getting back into it every week and finally putting out some content for you guys but uh let's get to a thousand guys let's get to a thousand and then probably hopefully we'll actually do like a little special thing yes we'll do a a special little thing to thank you for helping us to reach a thousand plays so Keep your keep your ears open and your eyes peeled for that. Yeah, like we are super thankful for you guys, and I like like I guess um you know it's been wild it's been a wild week because we reached <laughs> over a hundred in like less than a week. I'm like, what yeah, the fuck is was, this? We're like we were we were yeah we were mind boggled. Like I kept I kept sending you messages or like hey we made it to this number and just <laughs> and you just be like what the fuck how. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i've been just as shocked so thank you guys and let's get to a thousand yeah. thank you so much thanks guys and we hope you have a good night or good day whenever you're listening to this and, and you stay spooky yep absolutely <laughs> all right bye everybody bye